Imagine your car coordinating braking and acceleration with other vehicles on the road or even syncing up with traffic lights. Or say a head-up display with all the critical information you need for your journey projected six feet ahead of you as you drive in line with your natural focus point so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. But how many of us actually know what a connected car is? Now given that by 2020 there will be 220 million of these on the road, we really do need to be unravelling this technology far more. Our cars will soon feel like more of a utility, fired up by the power of the Internet of Things versus just a luxury that gets us from point A to B. So what could the connected car of the very near future do for you? Let's find out. Right, so today I'm joined by two very intriguing guests, both of whom really understand the auto space and are very passionate about it. Paula and Paul, thanks for being on Digital Futures. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, let's kick off by getting your take on what consumers can expect from connected cars in terms of that seamless connectivity between your house or your workplace and then sort of getting into your car and hitting the road. Paula. Um, I think com consumers can expect a, ver a variety of uh, offer of services, um, but I think the services that are mostly offered are um, mostly centered around safety, uh, mostly centered around connectivity, um, uh, convenience, and so on and so forth. So I think, yeah, I think those those three would be the main areas where consumers can expect uh, oh. uh, connectivity. Well, imagine you wake up this morning. Um, your partner has left the car, you don't know where it is, so you go, your watch or your phone tells you where the car is, you arrive at the car, your watch opens the door, you sit down, it chooses a playlist for you, it then calculates the routes because it knows where your workplace is, right here, and all this is done seamlessly. That's a bit, all this already can exist. This is a bit what you can expect. I love the fact that it might actually decide what kind of mood I should be in in the morning on my way to work, so it might put a bit of jazz in to calm me down on my way in. Guys, let's get a little inventive here. We like to do that on Digital Futures, and I think you're the right people for the job. I want to hear from you about some unusual, yet realistic applications in connected cars that may not exist, or they might do, that you want to see hit the road, let's say, a couple of years from now. Bola. I think um, something that's an area that's not been touched really in this space is something called prognostics. Um, so prognostics is um, predicting faults before it happens. Um, and I think that's something that, with the availability of data from connected cars, I think that's something that is really going to happen. And we apply these to our health, don't we? We think we'd rather have preventative health care than, than get struck down by yep. a disease. So why not to our cars? Paul, what about you? Well, you mentioned healthcare, so the healthcare of a city, the health of the community. Uh, so you, know, you want also greener cars. So not only they can actually assess your driver behavior. Are you an aggressive driver? Are you not an aggressive driver? Can you actually drive, set, decide, oh, you might be suffering from fatigue now. So we're not even talking about driver's less car, but it could actually warn you. These kind of things that are actually predictive of your behavior. Yeah, actually, and that's better for our frame of mind as well. Otherwise, you get on the road and then there's road rage, which is quite a real thing, especially in India where I'm from. Trust me, everyone yells at everyone yes, every 10 I've minutes. I've driven in India, so oh, yes. you have. And the joke is that every car has a dent on it <laughs> because someone or the other has, has smashed into them. So Paul, you briefly mentioned self-driving cars. Now, a lot of people I speak to want to understand this transition to autonomous cars, but I wonder if consumers will prefer part autonomous versus fully driverless. What's your take on that? I mean, if you think about the 50s, cars meant freedom. You could go wherever you want very easily. And the more the time went, th went on, the more it became a kind of a slavery because the gridlocks we mentioned before. So what you want now is to bring back this kind of feeling of freedom. And driverless as cars could give that. We're not sure yet. Like you said, are people ready to do it? And also, you know, the, the, the most interesting bit is not if what, it's what you do when the car is driving you. People are so used to, oh, I'm going to grab the wheel or I'm going to switch gears. What do you do if you have nothing to do? So I think in, to answer the question, there's no definite answer, but there will be a transition period when people will get used to it over time. And maybe at some point we'll get purely driverless as a car. It could actually feel quite disconcerting, I think, to be sat in the back of a car, sort of like a ghost car in a way, where you're sitting there going, 
is this completely taking care of me or should I be instinctively grabbing for the wheel as you said. Now switching back to our regular cars and this is for both of you there is a darker aspect here right and obviously cybersecurity is on everyone's radar at the moment globally it's quite an epidemic actually but what do we need to know about car hacking? Bola. I think I think you've just said it there I think it applies to it's happened to every industry. I think you have something to understand. Um, no matter what industry you're going to be in, someone with the right expertise can hack into 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 whatever system. Um, but that said, I think they need to be more focused on on improving the security of the services. Paul, what about you? Anything to add there? Well, you know, um, Facebook has 16, I think, 60 million lines of codes. A high-end car nowadays, 100 million lines of codes. It's already a very very Standard. advanced computing machine, you know, for safety, for fuel injection, for, you know, the part, the little beep you hear when you park, yeah, these things are, so of course it's a concern. Uh, it's something that I, I think in general cybersecurity doesn't, people are not waking up until it happens to them. You know, we've seen that over and over and over. And I think in the next 10 to 15 years, in all types of industries, we'll see people being waken up by these cases. So is this a concern for everyday life? No, but I think uh, the major car makers in particular should be actually concerned and look into it. Absolutely. So guys, lastly, to round this off, how time has flown, huh? In one line each, what do you think it's gonna take to drive meaningful consumer uptake of connected car services so it doesn't feel so overwhelming or daunting for a consumer that isn't tech savvy or isn't a digital native? Bola? I think it's, uh, I think it's a focus on simplicity. Um, simplicity and uh, a simplicity is seamless experience that solves a real pain. Um, I think people view cars as a utility um, and I think people want that simplicity, just like you said, for anyone to be able to jump into their vehicle. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I'll had, because I agree with simplicity, I had fun. You know, people still like to have fun. Car is still fun to drive. Some people might disagree, but it has to have this element of fun. And probably as well, in the bigger picture, an element of, you know, it's not about creating smart communities. It's livable communities, livable cities. And the car has to pick part of it. And with all this data, the cars could share with the city or the community, it could create a better environment for all of us. Absolutely. So it's not just about the cars, it's about smarter cities as well. And actually, a car, speaking of fun, is something that a lot of people have quite an attachment to. I mean, people name their cars. I haven't named my Beamer at all. I can't think of a name, so I haven't gone there. But there is that emotional bond as well. And people often feel very sad when they've got to get rid of a car and swap it in for a new one. But listen, guys, thank you so much for being on Digital Futures today. I really enjoyed that very lively debate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, it's clear that not only are cars themselves evolving, but so is the consumer's view of them. And the way that we look at our cars is probably going to change even further as technology becomes more and more embedded into its very DNA. The best part, however, this is all already at your fingertips. This has been Digital Futures. Thank you for watching.